our big story today is this uh, missing Santa Cruz girl, eight-year-old girl missing since yesterday. We've got a lot of crews on it. Hopefully there'll be some development tonight. They'll find this girl and, and uh, we'll have a nice happy ending to the story tonight. Uh, thus far, the searchers have not turned up any information that points to the whereabouts of Maddie Middleton. Eight-year-old girl missing Santa Cruz uh, since uh, last night. Uh, big search going on. And uh, we just had a press conference with uh, Santa Cruz PD. It really was just, we're, we're still looking, the investigation's ongoing. But uh, this is one of those stories that none of us like to cover. It's, a kid goes missing and it's a parent's worst nightmare. Well, Pam, the good news here from police headquarters uh, where we got an update just about an hour ago is that so far a foul play here is not suspected and there's also... No we just uh, finished our live shots uh, from the police station. Now we're back over here getting some uh, new footage, updated footage of what's going on at the, uh, the Tannery Arts Center where uh, the young girl was uh, last seen. They've asked me to uh, uh, keep an eye on things here because, you know, there could, you know, something could develop, something could happen, something could change. Did you just break that? No, I promise I didn't. Right, let's go. Did you get any sound at all when you went over there? No, no, I just got pictures really quick. Uh-oh, what's going on, what's going on? Something's going on Something's back there. Oh, oh my God, they're getting out the, the tape, they're getting the tape out. Yeah, you could. Something happening. Nothing. We don't know anything. So we just heard a on. bunch something of screaming. Uh, cops came over here. The mother screaming. There's this guy over here that's also shocked. I hear they have a 14-year-old boy in custody. We don't know what's going on. A mother, a mother saying, "What did you do with my son?" And the cops had her bag, like emptying out her bag. So she's over there. That's the mother over there, right there. Need a backup behind the tape, please, back here. Uh, grab the box. Jeez. Jeez, can you see anything from here? Um, well, we don't know how much of a choice, but yeah, from right here I can. I'll stay right behind this motorcycle. Get up here. Get up in front. Just get up here. Jeez. Get up here. Very distraught, man. You gotta do stop filming me, you guys. Stop it, dude. It's now been more than 24 hours since Madison Middleton vanished. There are apparently some developments unfolding right now at this hour. Alicia, what can you tell us about what's going on? Well, Pam, they were treating this as a missing persons case, not as a kidnapping, but something just unfolding. It's unfolding as we speak. If you look back there, I think that's the mother of another child. I hear he's about 14 or 15 years old. Police just came in and swarmed this entire area. They just put up yellow tape just within the last minute or two. That woman is over there screaming right now, saying something about her son, but I hear he, they found, we're not sure what they found, but they have her son in custody. There's a car over there that, they might have some evidence in the car. Something is going on, Pam, we have no idea. We're still trying to figure it out. This mother is screaming uncontrollably. We're still trying to figure this all out as it's unfolding. Cops are pushing us back as we're trying to find out what's going on. But all we know as of now is that there is a kid in custody and uh, this mother is out there screaming. Is Maddie Middleton's mother in the area where you are right now? Oh, we haven't seen Maddie's mom. They have a bunch of yellow tape up at this point. They keep pushing us back. We have no idea what's going on. And they're trying to push us back even further at this point. They swarmed in, put a bunch of yellow tape up. The mother is out over there right now, screaming uncontrollably. We have no idea what is going on, but we do think that she or her son, from what we're hearing, her son has something to do with this case. Um, well, we're moving right now, so we don't know. Um, yeah, you can come back to me, it's fine. 
The guy, so guy in the green shirt go. saw something that really upset him, something bad. I mean, he was he was over there vomiting and stuff. So oh the guy, my the guy gosh. in the green shirt, yeah. So he saw something. Okay. Okay. So he's over there now. Though. Yeah, he's you he's on his knees. There? Yeah, he's not in good shape right now. So right now we're just hoping that uh, we're hoping that we want, want her son to come back, and then we want the the mother that doesn't know yet that's on the other side of the complex to kind of brace herself for what what's gonna come. Right. You see the red door over there. Hey, we got a we got a press conference about to happen. I got my view coming, uh, powering up. It should be up in just a moment, okay? Yeah. Black thing in the red case. Right here. Yes. Tina, tell me what's happening. Okay, I'm here. Yes. Uh, last last night at about 6 p.m. Uh, July 26th, we received a report of a missing female juvenile here at the Tannery Arts Center. And this is a call for a special report. We are going straight to the news conference where Santa Cruz police are updating the case of Madison Middleton. This evening, at approximately 7.55 p.m., and this is extraordinarily heartbreaking news that I'm about to give to you, our detectives discovered the body of a young female inside of a dumpster at the complex located behind me. The body that was discovered appears to be that of a young female, although we have not positively identified her yet. We believe that she is probably Madison Middleton. We will have a complete wrap up, including information on the 15 year old boy taken into custody in this case, more on him and the situation involving the two children. All of that coming up tonight on Cron4 News at 11 o'clock. We hope you join us then. We will now join our regular programming in progress. I don't know, I just hold them in prayer. You know, just even if it was just for a moment because I cannot even imagine the pain. This job will keep you awake to what the world suffers through every day. But it is our job to pull it together and let people know what happened. Breaking news, you just, you never know. Not glorious at all. Lots of heartache, lots of stress. And uh, you just have to pound it out, you know. And remember the families, remember that this little girl's mom was hoping they'd find her and now we're reporting that she's murdered. You know, we have to remember that when we're talking, you know, telling the audience what we found out. We still have to remember that there's a family on the other side. What if they're watching, you know? So we have to be careful how we report it too. So today, you know, we've still got this big fire burning uh, up near Lake Berryessa. So Teresa Estacio is in Winters um, at the EVAC Center with Jackie Sissel. And then we've got Will Tran and Yoli at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, which is always a big deal every year. Soph, you there? Hey, Soph, can you talk to me? Let's do it. See, because the flames are ready. Let's do it. See these guys? They're ticked off and that's going to be upside my head. The big old skillet. Look at that, you're about to go on and you have the 6 a.m. producer calling you. No, this is 6 a.m., here we go, here we go. That's the 6 a.m. producer worried about her, her newscast. Teresa Stasio has been monitoring this fire, the RAG fire as it's called. We just got an update that CAL FIRE is going to be holding a news conference at 11 o'clock. I don't mind being out on stories like this. I'd rather be here than a garlic festival. I hate festivals, they're dirty. I hate them, I hate crowds and everybody's going to start swarming here to the community center because there's an update with CAL FIRE at 11 o'clock. Uh, we have calls into the mayor to try and talk to the mayor. That she's got eight up. hours and she's already stressed out. I don't have eight hours. I got stuck here forever yesterday. She's already stressed out. Mm -hmm. Ass. <laughs> I love Jackie. When I first started at Cron4 News, I sat in the car with Jackie and I goes, so what's the deal? Who are you? 
did you just come here from college? And I'm like, I was a network correspondent. He goes, good, shut up, let's go to the store. I like a man who's direct, and he is super direct. So anytime I can work with Jackie, it's a good thing. And the 37th annual Gilroy Garlic Festival starting today with thousands of people expected to attend as crowds come from all over to enjoy garlicky foods, including Will Tran, live this morning uh, with more from the festival. Well, I purposely did not eat anything this morning, just coffee, just to come here so I can have a little bit of calamari with my garlic. You can see they're ready to go. Look at that. Fire in the hole. Look at that. Whoa. I, I'm going to come back and the side of my head will be all just singed. <laughs> see that? See my chest there? That's eat. You never ever present food to a reporter because in 21, 22 years of reporting, if there's food there, I have never not eaten. Especially, seriously, calamari. Oh, this is like my third plate. By the time this is over, I'm six, seven plates easily. Easily. Um, we're coming back just to walk. It's our first walkthrough to see how things are. You know, we have families that come here for 15 years straight, and it's, it's really become a part of all of us. So. We love the fact that they're as concerned about this as we are. But we got some amazing stuff. I'm really, you know, the clock is ticking on me. I wish I had more time to tell her story, but I really don't. It is uh, incredibly late. Look at the air tanker. God, those are beautiful. Look at that. That was pretty cool. Oh, that was totally cool. You never, ever get these. You never, ever, ever. In 30 years, I've never gotten that. Garlic bread. You know where the garlic ice cream is? I've covered this many years. I have never had the courage to eat garlic ice cream. Unlike some of my colleagues, a lot of times they have one live shot or two live shots and they're pretty much done. The challenge is to obviously give new, compelling information update it as you go. But once you kind of run out of updates, you want to give them new scenery, new things to keep watching. So all morning at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, we've been showing the grills and all of the garlic that they use. Well, it's a cheap garlic fries. Oh, I hate the garlic festival. These are always very difficult stories. They're always in, um, not always, but most of the time they're in rural areas. Um, so it's hard to get to places. Um, sometimes there's limited, uh, internet so that's always a challenge yesterday we had all kinds of problems trying to get live shots out here in winters with this fire affecting so many people who live in this community fires are always um, this opportunity to see the best of people because in emergency situations and critical situations you just really see the strength of people and how they rally amongst themselves and make it happen you know and and in a smaller community like this they're even more connected well here we go here we go young lady all right thank you rebecca it's scarlet time once again you heard of that show mark yan can cook well guess what i got a new 2.0 version tran can cook look what they've allowed me to do this is about a 10 to 15 pound skillet and it is on fire right now you can see the oil in there so they said uh, about 30 seconds ago this is how you do it so about to see Will Tran go up in flames on live television. Down here, anybody wants to come down here to learn about uh, how to make uh, calamari. You're rolling on this, so right? Tip up. Oh, God. You push away. Oh, throw God. This in there. Look at that. Oh, God. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I can feel the heat on that puppy. And then, right, you reach down. This good enough for you, Mark? This good enough for you? There we go. Look at that. I'm bringing this back to you guys. Tran can cook. Back to you. Well, very impressive. I can't believe you still have your eyebrows. Always remember, stop, drop, and roll. No. Well, I'm surprised he's still alive. I mean, that was a genuine concern at seven was that he wasn't going to survive the hit. I mean, that, he's a little guy. Those are some big flames, and you know, I'm not really sure he's qualified, you know, to be handling you know, such large kitchen utensils. I don't know, but. Uh, Thank God he survived this time. Uh, I'd be real nervous about sending him back next year.
today is a big news day with the funeral for the Hayward police officer that was killed. Um, but because the uh, arraignment for the suspect in the Santa Cruz case was in court, Will Tran and Yoli ended up going to Santa Cruz this morning. Teresa Estacio sort of filled their role and uh, took care of the uh, coverage along the procession this morning uh, for the officer's funeral. While, while you're setting that up, can you tell me why we're out here so early? I absolutely cannot. Not okay. right now. Can you help me with the DeGero box? We are out here at Chapel of Chimes um, in Hayward, where there's been a public viewing for this officer. And today, law enforcement are going to do an escort from here so that the public can, can be out here um, to pay their respects as the hearse goes by. Thousands of people are expected for the funeral service of fallen Haywood Sergeant Scott Lunger. Just horrible. You know, there's been so many stories, bad stories about police officers yesterday, and this is an important reminder, you know, how dangerous their job is. And... Hey, look at just this morning, right now, we got the breaking news over in Lombard, two officers are in trouble, you know? And that's just a regular day in the news. This stuff is happening all the time. Taken two. Back to Will. The Crop Force Will Tran is outside the courthouse this morning with the latest. Will? What's going to happen in one hour from now, and you can see there are people right there trying to head into the courthouse. Let's show you his picture. His name is Adrian Gonzalez. He's 15 years old, and in this case, if he is convicted, Daria, he could spend the rest of his life in jail without parole. Un unfortunately, we've covered so many stories like this, right, that on Monday, there was just even the feeling that, like, I don't think they're going to find her alive. I never, ever, ever wear a dress in the field, ever. And here I thought it was going to be hot and I'm freezing. Hi, nobody's talking to me. Can someone talk to me? One, my anchors up here. Right now we want to go to Teresa Stasio, who's at the Chapel of the Chimes. Teresa? Good morning, Daria. Good morning, everyone. In the past hour, there has been a large group of police officers that have showed up here. It's hard to think about doing a good job when you're talking about someone's death and their grieving family. It's like, how could you possibly do a good job on that other than be thoughtful, be respectful, but good job? Just, I don't think that's the way that we should handle these. We just got heat from somebody who says we make a living out of people's misery. If I had a day off, guess what? I wouldn't be going I into that courtroom. Exactly. But you're here. He's but, here. But you're here purposely choosing. Of all the places on this earth you could be, you choose to be here. Why? Why? So who's ghoulish? Sorry. Corey Martinez. Can I throw it? Oh, here's the prosecutor. I don't know. Can you move me up higher? Get, get, get in place, get in place. There's the prosecutor. Uh, so the short version is the uh, penalties that he's facing are uh, life sentences. I think at this point, you in the media know far more about the case than we do um, in the public defender's office. Can I talk to you? I'm sorry. I don't do okay. I understand. Can I talk to you? I've seen that you out here oh, for no, a no, while. Oh, no, 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 okay. no, What was important about coming out here? Uh, show my support for fellow officers and my cousins who are here with police officers. Will's back. Go back to Will after this. We've got Will back. We'll go back to Will. Stand by Mark on two. We're going to go back to Will. Injured. Crop Force Will Tran is outside the courthouse this morning with the latest. Will? And I'm Will Tran, live in Santa Cruz, where 15-year-old Adrian Gonzalez just made his first court appearance outside right now. It's the prosecutor. We will have a live interview with him in just a few minutes from now on this case involving eight-year-old Madison Middleton. Anyway, I think, I think what Will was doing was a big deal yeah. because this is the first time that we've seen this 15-year-old who's charged with murder, and it's huge to have Will in the courtroom and be able to see the size of him, his demeanor, uh, and then what's happening next. Right. This is a story everybody wants to see what is going to happen to this teenager. Oh, my God. I feel like 100 years old this morning. Were you comfortable with the arraignment being pushed back until, until a couple of months from now, sir? The investigation is ongoing. There's voluminous reports. 
the defense wanted time for that, and that does not seem inappropriate. Three, two, one, like the anchors, up, cue. And the top story that we're following this morning, mourners starting to gather to remember fallen Hayward Police Sergeant Scott Lunger. I saw the procession go by, my first thought was gratitude for a hero. I just came in for some support. You know, uh, I thought it was amazing, man. I, you know, it's so many people is out here giving support, and I think it's, uh, it's a good thing. I think there's just been a lot of tension this week with uh, the death of this eight-year-old. Anytime there's a death, it's awful, but the death of a child is just awful, and especially these circumstances. And, and just, you know, then you, you think about the two young girls, two college girls coming out and they're walking behind their dad's casket. It's just, it's just awful. There's no other way around it.